Welcome back to the RightWave Audio Community. My name is John, and for this video, we will be covering the 2021 AK Capable AV receivers from Brand Integra. This will be the DRX 5.4, 3.4, and 2.4 that were released this year. And with this, we will be comparing it with sister brands Pioneer and Onkyo. This is a series we've been running since August. And we started with uh, Yamaha at the beginning of August. And we started with Yamaha in August, followed by Pioneer in early September. And then we got to mid-September. We did a comparison between Pioneer and Onkyo. Of course, this video is going to complete the story with an Integra and how they all line up there. And then uh, in uh, end of September, we did the Denon uh, models that are AK. Marantz was followed in October. We did the comparison with, with Denon. We had then covered Lingdorf, and uh, that was at the end of November. And the last video we did, the seventh in the series, was Macintosh. And then we did a compare against the Marantz and Lingdorf models that are kind of equivalent based on those uh, Macintosh models that are in their series. So we're trying to cover all the 8K receivers that are available in 2021. And you would say, wait, just stop, John. We know other brands have committed to 8K um, and you haven't covered them. True, but they haven't released them either. So, you know, the, there's only a few weeks left in 2021. A lot of these brands are not making, making their, their uh, advertised, their published uh, announcements. Uh, and some have pushed them off already till next year. So we're going to do a wrap up video after this one. So that will kind of close off the year. You know, who came out with them? What, how do these all compare? Help you make some decisions. Again, I will get a little preview of what's to come. So, you know, that's that's the next video. But let's get into this. Let's get into the Integra models now. And it all starts with their five series. And there's three main series with Integra. It's the five series. It's the three series and the two series. Now, if you know of the brands, um, you know, Pioneer, Onkyo, and Integra, Integra is the one that's positioned for the integrator market. So you get a, a third party to install this for you, to do that value add, uh, not just give you buying a, a, re, a receiver, but doing all the hookup for you. And that's what Integra brand is now positioned at. So the five series uh, marks the flagship uh, range for them at this time. They have um, their model numbers are based off of the generation. So you have dot one, dot two, dot three, and now dot four, which is their fourth generation of the five series, which has come out this year. So the prior generation came out in 2019. So this is after two years, this is their refresh with the 8K. And so everything that's dot four is 8K capable. And what you see here is that they've jumped in price from $1,700 to $2,000. So it's a $300 jump. Now this can be justified by some of the increases in component costs, uh, shipping costs out there. Uh, it seems to be a fair jump here. I think other brands have inflated it more than necessary. This might be perceived as more of a fair increase. Now as their flagship, this has the most amplification and the most channels. So these have 12 channels of processing. Now, what you have to be careful with is not all those 12 have onboard amplification. So they only have onboard amplification for nine channels, but those nine channels are at 120 watts each. Of course, probably rated for two channels driven, not all channels driven, so be careful there as well. So how do you get the other two? Well, there's on the pre-outs, they give you an extra set there to make the 12. So you have to use external amplification if you want to go to 12 channels of processing. So keep that in mind. If you flip this thing around to its back, it looks like the same story here. 
uh, between generations, between the third and the fourth generation. Uh, so no big change here. I think some of the spacings are a little different on the back plane, but otherwise very similar uh, on the back. Now let's drop down to the three series. Uh, again, there's a $300 adder uh, in the new generation. So they went, um, but this is at a lower price point, right? So they went from $1,000 to $1,300. Uh, so uh, the flagship uh, was just going to do two, 12 channels of processing. This can only do 10 channels. They still have the nine channels of onboard amplification, but at 100 watts per channel, two channels driven on the amplification. Uh, you can see the remotes are the same. Uh, front panels on this you know, look identical here. If we flip this thing around to the back, we do see a major difference. So what they've done here, what they've done here is they've added in pre-outputs. And thank you for doing that. I think at this price point, you really should be doing pre-outputs. So uh, you, you can uh, uh, get, get, use external outputs on, on this. So that's, that's a welcome site and a, a good addition there. Going to the two series. And again, cosmetically, these things look the same. Uh, between generations, this is only a $100 adder in cost. Uh, of course, there's less elasticity in the pricing when you get below $1,000. So to go $300 here would be a lot. Uh, here's only a $100 difference. It's still seven channels of amplification, 80 watts per channel for eight channels of processing. And uh, if you flip this around on the back here, you know, looks very similar, but you actually lose something. So while they didn't go up as much in price, they did take away the composite and component video inputs. Now, Ripe Wave Audio believes that that technology is, is so far um, in the past now, it's fair to drop them. I know some of you might still have some legacy components that have only that output. Uh, in that case, you may have to go up to the higher series or go to a different brand, uh, but we do think it is fair, uh, particularly below $1,000 to drop composite and component uh, inputs from these devices. So that is the three series. Uh, they're all going to 8K. And if we look at them side by side, we can see that you know it drops down five series, 12 channels of processing, three series, 10 channels of processing, two series, eight channels of processing. And while the, the five and the three both have nine channels of am onboard amplification, they're done at lower wattages for the three series. And, uh, you know, the, the five series is a, a bigger chassis. Well, it has to be to support the extra amplification, the additional uh, channels of processing. So it makes sense that it's a, a taller unit there. The three and the two series are looking like they use basically the same chassis. In fact, cosmetically, these all look the same. Now, when we compare these to the uh, sister brands, Pioneer and Onkyo, these look quite different. If you look, they went to, uh, in the days you could go to a, a stereo shop and look at them side by side, you, you wouldn't know these were all made by the same company from the front of them. Uh, so. One thing that you'll notice big difference in the Integra is there's no flop down hidden door set of buttons. Uh, I don't care for those anyways. In fact, you can still have a pretty handsome unit, uh, even if all those buttons are exposed. And I think in Integra demonstrates that point that, that I wouldn't be embarrassed to put this on my sh uh, visible shelf, uh, uh, even though it is, uh, does, they do realize that this is going in many cases in an equipment rack that might be hidden away. Uh, and that's why they don't do the extra door uh, on, on the front. But uh, I, I'd remove them from all of them. Uh, the other major change is you can see the back plane is a white background with black letters versus the inverse. I think that's easier to read. I think that's why some of these companies are going that way. Uh, they've done it only with the Integra brand. Uh, I think that's a good change. 
comparing um, the the uh, it further, you can see you know they're all 12 channels of processing. They're in all nine channels of internal amplification. They're all at 120 watts, uh, but there is $600 between these models, uh, and I think you'll see that Integra is always the most expensive, followed by Pioneer, and then Onkyo becomes the value brand. And But feature-wise, they're not always completely lined up, so you have to be careful in some instances uh, there, particularly like when it comes to certifications. On the 5 Series, the, the Pioneer model is the BSX LX505 Elite. The Onkyo is their newest model number, which is the TXRZ50. When we go to the 3 Series, uh, the, the DRX 3.4 compares with the BSX LX305 Elite from Pioneer and the TX NR7100 from Onkyo. These are all 10 channels of processing units. They all have 9 channels of amplification built in, and they're all delivering at 100 watts per channel rated at two channels driven. Uh, cosmetically, the same statements can be made here, uh, front and back, uh, so no big change there. They're all using the same remote. And the price range on the 3 Series goes from $1,300 down to $1,100, so only $200 between these, not as much uh, gap in price. Uh, between these, so uh, it really comes down to what you prefer, I think, uh, when you're only talking $200. And and similarly, uh, when we go to the 2 Series, here we're down to a $100 difference, uh, $50 between models. So again, pick, pick your poison here, which one do you want? And uh, they're all 8 channels of processing. Uh, they're all 7 channels of internal amplification driven at 8 watts, 80 watts. Uh, two channels driven, and the Pioneer equivalent to the DRX 2.4 is the VSX LX105 Elite, and Onkyo has their TXNR6100 here. Uh, again, the same cosmetically, very similar between uh, generate uh, between the series here of uh, the comments they can make. Taking a look internal to these, they all look like they're using the same chassis um, looks like they have a fan built into all these you know so the front plate is is different the back plate is different uh, but internally the structure on this is using this about the same chassis and here is the integra one uh, you can see the power supply in there labeled integra uh, did find some interior shots for pioneer and onkyo although not all of them are uh, the most current generations but you can see that the layout, the positioning, the chassis, these are all based off of the same physical hardware uh, there. Now let's get into the details. And we always start with you know the channel layouts on this. So on the five series equivalents, and we've got these brackets that we're now using on these to help group these for you. Integra Pioneer Onkyo models at nine channels, 12 channels of processing. Uh, naturally, you can see that these are really 7.1.4 designs, 11.1. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, Atmos DTSX processing, and we'll see that across the board here. Uh, we're not seeing Oral 3D, we're not seeing DTSX Pro on any of these models. When you go to the three series equivalents and uh, for Pioneer and Onkyo, uh, again, the same layout. So it's either going to be a 5.1.4 or 7.1.2 configuration. What we do see consistently is they're all putting headphone jacks and they're all doing it at a quarter inch, which is great to see. They all have LAN ports. Uh, they all have, on at least this page, they all have DB9 for your integration. They have removable power cords. They have FMAM tuners. So a lot of similarities in here, as well as the USB and the Bluetooth capabilities, uh, as, as you see. And uh, finally here, if we go to the introductory series, the two series and its equivalent from Pioneer and Onkyo, uh, you know, the layout is going to be a 5.1.2 or a 7.1. 
Uh, one thing to note is I say dot one. These are all only, regardless of brand, regardless of series, only one independent subwoofer output, even though they might have two physical subwoofer outputs on the unit. So keep that in mind. If you want independent control of subwoofers and you have multiple subs, Integra, Onkyo, and Pioneer is not the brand to deliver on that. Looking back at these as far as their support for formats and certifications, and uh, you know, one of the comments recently is, got to be careful about the language I am using. And of course, yes, THX is a certification, not a firm format. So uh, I didn't mean to confuse people. I, sometimes I talk quickly. Uh, so they all have IMAX Enhance on this page with the 5 and the 3 series uh, equivalents. Uh, they all have Dolby Vision. What Integra has done, and this is what we saw with Pioneer and Anki, was they've moved from their own proprietary calibration to adding in Dirac Live. And a lot of people really love seeing this. And so Integra followed suit going from 3 to 4 series here. Uh, they always had AccuEQ that remains. They just added a Dirac Live to, to the base. Uh, so equivalently, Pioneer has the MCACC, which pairs with Dirac Live, and Onkyo has AccuEQ like Integra, so they're more equivalent. Of course, we know Integra was derived from Onkyo originally uh, as one of their sub-brands. And then, of course, for the 2 Series, so what we see drop on the 2 Series equivalents is there's no IMAX Enhance. Uh, but they do have Dolby Vision, and the other thing that gets dropped is no Dirac. So under $1,000, do not expect any Dirac live support. And the um, THX, and I'll kind of backtrack here a little bit, the only model that, um, the, the only series that Integra has with THX is the 5 series. They do not put it on the 3 series and likewise not on the 2 series and Pioneer does not have any THX uh, certification. Uh, Onkyo carries that certification right down to this uh, NR6100 which uh, if that's important to you then Onkyo may be your preference. Looking at the uh, channels and the I.O. here so across the board, and regardless of the model, there's all six HDMI inputs, two outputs. Uh, what's moved up in generations is now your, you have that output that's eARC that you didn't have in the prior generations. And uh, the uh, coax and the SPDIF um, uh, optical uh, are one coax and one optical. That's a little stingy, of course, HDMI is supplanting those. You're not going to see any AES EBU on any of these models. You're not going to see any balanced uh, outputs of or inputs of any kind. You are going to see a variety of pre outputs on these. And you know, you start to see like on the um, the, the big change, you know, we mentioned earlier was on the three series Integra. You know, moving from really just a subwoofer pre-out to actually having 9.1 for pre-outs is, is a welcome sight. They all have two zone outputs on these. Sometimes they're shared uh, with, with the other pre-outs uh, and configurable there. Uh, you can see how the composite component drops off uh, with the Pioneer, the uh, LX305, and uh, Onkyo 7100. Integra keeps those in the 3 series, but as we know, we drop those in the 2 series. We'll see that on the next page. They all have a phono moving magnet. You know, I can see moving coil built into any AVR. And you see that Integra being an integrator's um, uh, sp specific brand, you're going to see more triggers on these. They all have uh, three triggers which you, you don't see on uh, the Pioneer and Onkyo, and more infrared uh, ins and outs on those as well. So that's a big difference with the Integra brands. 
And again, the two, two series if we move this, it's still six HDMI. I'm glad they kept that HDMI count up, even on their entry level models. Of course, Pioneer and Onkyo does the same, and they're all moving to eARC. Uh, still one and one with the coax and optical. Uh, and, and likewise, of course, you're going to lower your your um, analog inputs from six down to four when you move to the entry level series. Very consistent here. Uh, and, you know, Integra dropped those composite component from their two series, but now that's aligned with the equivalent Pioneer and Onkyo models. Uh, good to see that the triggers are still at three uh, for the entry level Integra. So you don't get that on the entry level. You don't get any sort of uh, triggers on the Onkyo entry level. Looking deeper into HDMI, uh, so what we dropped from the prior generations is the, the older uh, HDMI uh, uh, support. Now we're at, at, at 2.1 uh, support. We are at eARC. We are, uh, you know, 120 hertz for the 4K, 60 hertz for the 8K. Uh, you've got HDR10, you've got HDR10 Plus now for all of these, you got Dolby Vision, you got IMAX Enhance, you got Hybrid Log Gamma, you got Rec 2020. There is some variations in what they're claiming for HDMI uh, 2.1 features. Integra lists the most on their literature. Uh, so this is, I'm going to my glasses for it is auto low latency mode, um, variable refresh rate, uh, QMS, FBA, uh, QFT, and DSC are all supported uh, on the Integra models. But if we look at Pioneer, they don't have um, mention of the um, VFA uh, support. And then when you go to Onkyo, they not only don't have VFA support, they don't list QM, QMS or DC, DSC. <laughs> Boy, this gets hard to say after a while. So uh, don't know if they'll add those into their literature or maybe they don't support them at all, but uh, there's some inconsistencies there. Um, maybe they wanted to position uh, these brands differently as far as the HDMI they support, or it's an or it's an error in their their reporting on their literature. Not sure what the case is, but the same is true on the two series uh, for the HDMI 2.1 support. Otherwise, this is the same story right down to the entry level series uh, for HDMI. When we look at the DAX, uh, we haven't seen any reporting on the newer models of what's in there. We know that they were AKM chips, uh, the 4458 that was in the third generation uh, 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 series, whether that's the, 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 uh, the five series, the three series, or the two series, they were all that same chip. Uh, but in, what we do notice is regardless, and we, we could assume that the same chips are there, um, regardless, Pioneer, Onkyo, Integra all report the same output specifications across series, across brands. They're all doing a signal to noise ratio of 106 dBs, a total harmonic distortion of 0.08%, PCM decoding at 24192. DSD is supported at DSD 64 over HDMI. I did put an extra note in here because if you are going in through other interfaces and connecting to a music server, they will do up to DSD 256, which is higher than uh, most other brands on, on that capability. And we see that right down to the entry level series on this, on, on all these specs. Um, so when it comes to networking, they're all Ethernet, they're all Wi-Fi. They're all Bluetooth capability. But I always point out to everybody is when you say Bluetooth, is it Bluetooth from the source or Bluetooth out to speakers and headphones? Well, prior generation Integra only had Bluetooth from a source, like an, an iPhone 
uh, Android phone. Uh, now they've added in output, Bluetooth output, and uh, we see that as well on Pioneer and Onkyo. So all the new models have Bluetooth output as well. And that's carried right down to the 2 Series on all that capability. When we're looking at control, whether that's voice control, um, Integra offers the most. And so they're reporting, as well as Alexa voice commands uh, that, that uh, all the Pioneer and Onkyo do. They also advertise the Google Assistant uh, voice control. None of them are advertising Siri support. Although if you're integrated with AirPlay, you might get it through another way. Josh um, voice control is advertised for Integra. And uh, not there's no Josh mention on the other brands. So as an integration um, pitch, of course, they're going to have more there. On the protocol, again, Integra's got more infrared support, two in, one out, than the, um, subsequent, the other brands. Uh, they, they all have DB9 serial connections. They have three trigger outs versus two and one from Pioneer and Onkyo, respectively. They all claim support for Control 4. The Integra also lists Crestron specifically on their website. Uh, whether others can also integrate, uh, it's just not advertised. And then right down to the 2 series, a lot of this hangs true. But you can see uh, Onkyo drops off a lot of support on its entry level, uh, but Integra uh, holds uh, strong with uh, infrared uh, serial and trigger outputs uh, and keeps the integration with Control 4 and Crestron uh, advertised for that two, two series. Looking at streaming ecosystems, they're all AirPlay 2, they're all Chromecast, they all support Sonos. Uh, they have added rune tested capability to the new generation so we didn't have that previously they're all spotify connect capable they uh, have added dts playfy so that's this is one area where dts playfy is has been added it hasn't been the most popular ecosystem but uh, uh, they, they felt that they were they wanted to add it flare connect uh, seems to have dropped from Integra support, but maintained on Pioneer and Onkyo. So that inconsistency is interesting. I, I don't know if that's intentional in the literature, but they're not advertising that anymore on the Integra new generations. Uh, again, this carries through uh, to the same story to the introductory two series. So uh, same capability on ecosystem there. Uh, streaming, very consistent story here. Amazon Prime, Apple Music, Deezer, Pandora, Spotify, tuned in for the radio. I think I had an error there on the, the previous um, Onkyo Pioneer one that's all tuned in with them. Uh, and Tidal, uh, again, like fashion, I, we do not see MQA support uh, on these uh, AK capable receivers and processors. And the same story right down to the two series equivalents. Looking at the remotes, we mentioned this several times already, and you can tell the difference on these remotes because the Integra ones have a blue button. The Pioneer have a orange power button and the Onkyo ones have a yellow power button. And you can tell they're all the same right down to the two series uh, on these remotes. On dimension wise, what we're going to see is the flagship series are all about the same size, although there's some variations in height. Uh, but otherwise, this is this is all quite equivalent here, and um, they just get a little smaller. Uh, the heaviest ones, you know, that it follows suit right down to the. Uh, uh, series that the the five series is going to weigh the most. Uh, in fact, the the Integra brand weighs more than Pioneer or Onkyo. The Integra one weighs more than Pioneer, but Onkyo is weighing the same. So it's just slight slight variations. The power consumptions are in line with the series that they're in. So 850 for the five series, 750 for the three series, 
And for the 2 Series, it's around 450 watts, although the Onkyo one uh, is reporting higher for some reason, uh, power consumption. Um, and a little heavier there on the 2 Series, so that is interesting to note. Now, final section in here is looking at some of the, the user interface. And of course, it starts with the front panel. These all have their own style, but similar navigation with a, a wheel-like looking uh, navigation uh, and, and a series of buttons just aligned differently. It looks like the display is, is similar, but using different colors. Integra is kind of like a uh, closer to the white looking uh, font. Looking at the setup screens on these, uh, they're all sharing about the same ILO. Pioneer puts a little more polish on their system setup screen, a little more glossy looking. Uh, the Pioneer tends to put a little more gloss on their elite cosmetics anyways, so uh, not surprised to see there. But under the hood, as you start navigating, it looks like the, the, the uh, speaker setups and uh, other configurations are looking the same. All the Dirac Live menus are the same regardless of brand. So you're not getting anything different there. And as for the mobile apps, you know, they each have their own exclusive download from either the iOS App Store or from uh, you know the, the Google Play. But uh, you know, so they can view the branding, Integra, Pioneer, or Onkyo. But functionally, they look to be the same. I did find a couple of extra screen grabs for what they look like on a, an Apple device uh, for Integra than the other ones. But we're looking at the same uh, development there for those that software. So that wraps up for the Integra versus Pioneer and Onkyo video. What do you think? You know, which way would you stand if you're in uh, in line with liking these brands? Which is your preferred brand, and why uh, do you do that? And you know, do you like the the extra integration capabilities the Integra brand brings? Do you you know do you think it's worth the extra uh, money to pay for that? Uh, those those extra enhancements, or would you go more on the value side and go with the the Onkyo uh, brand over all of them? Uh, and get that THX certification that you may not find on the others, although the Integra brand has that on their 5 Series. So that wraps it up. Uh, your comments are always welcome. Please keep those coming. If you enjoyed this video, pre please like and subscribe to this RipeWave community. And be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.